you can uh, uh, transport your cargo by sea, by land, by air. The other thing is the Djibouti location is also the hinterland of the Djibouti. Uh, there is a nine Polish country, including Ethiopia. Its a population is 110 million. So this is also a huge business, huge populations, and so you can deal with them. Uh, most of the cargo or the business uh, abroad and uh, through the Ethiopia, and in Ethiopia, they use Djibouti boats. So this is the one of the advantage. The, our brothers in Uganda can set up the business in Djibouti, can sell to the Ethiopia, can sell to the neighboring country, can sell in the Middle East. We are even if in front of the in the Middle East. Uh, the third point is disadvantage in Djibouti is a maritime route. It's a business maritime route in the world. So it's a pavement that is called in the pavement the Strait, which are the gate for the Swiss Canal. So every person from far Asia, from Japan, Korea, China, India, Hong Kong should pass in front of us if you're going to the Europe or the North America. So this is one of the advantages can give you opportunity to set up your business in Djibouti. So um, other things, uh, our uh, Dr. Moore uh, highlights something called Jim Mart. What does it mean the gym market? Gym market, what's the difference between the, this online platform with other online is existing in the world now? There is the money e-commerce for everywhere. So what's the difference? Here, the gym market, this platform online, is under Djibouti free trade zones, controlling, managing. So if you uh, using gym in, uh, the, in this own B2B online, that means uh, the responsibility taken by the Djibouti free trade zones. And the, your transaction release when you get your cargo. When you get your cargo and then you uh, tell this cargo is not fake, is a real, and uh, according to my demand, that time is Djibouti free trade zone under the Jeep Mart release the money to the uh, suppliers. The third thing, the other thing is gymart.com uh, connect you the main supplier, not third party company, not shop, not a small shop in China or in uh, India or in uh, this is connected directly the factors. So this is the one of the advantage we need to benefit. Uh, other things, uh, sorry for all that. Other thing, if you want to deal uh, to set up. Uh, Djibouti free trade of your company, it's not necessary to deal with the government. In the Djibouti free trade zone, there is the company who manage this Djibouti free trade zone, calling Djibouti board and the prison authority, which are the middle between the businessman and the government. So there is only one stop shop in this free trade zone, you can deal all your uh, and, and, and requirements. And uh, you get your lessons when you set and, and uh, require or supply your lesson of the free trade zone. You can get within the 72 hour, and uh, you can not necessary to go to the telephone company. You are not necessary to go to the power and the company. You are not necessary to go any other government institution. Just only you will deal with one single shop which are existing in the free trade zones. Even if the banks, then all the banks have the branch in the free trade zones. And in the free trade zones also there is the hotels. There is the big hotel facility. If you want to open or you deal, you will stay busy. So you don't need to go outside of these free trade zones. So uh, thank you again all. If there is the, any questions, we will link you with you also, Djibouti teams, and then we ask, and the Honorable Richard, we are here. And for any communication, we are very, really, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, His Excellency Hassan. I wish to inform you that this is the fourth official business conference we are 
having in Uganda to do with the Djibouti Uganda Free Trade Zone uh, Authority. The last previous two were a few months ago, and yesterday we had another one here that hosted um, other categories of the business community. Today, we have you here as part of the corporate business community um, that we believe was uh, given the knowledge to do with this retreat zone, we can make a lot of business sense out of it. Let me take this opportunity to introduce some of the members here. I'll introduce them, of course, throughout our conference with time and hours. Um, we have Dr. Kanisha James, who is the Presidential Advisor on Exports and Industrial Development. At the same time, he is the CEO of KK Fresh Foods, Fresh Produce Exporters Limited. Dr. James Kaine, stand up for the commission. Thank you so much. We have Mr. Charles Kareba. Mr. Charles Kareba is the chairman of Uganda Shippers Council. He's the board member of the private sector foundation representing the logistics sector. He's a board member of the Central Corridor, which is between Uganda and Rasra. Mr. Charles Kareba, can you stand up for recognition? We have Mr. Ayrisibe Billy Roberts, a businessman, and he is the CEO of Joy and More Limited and Select Gamis Limited. Can you stand up for special recognition? Um, we have Mr. Augustine Ranga, who was here uh, before. Mr. Augustine Ranga happened to have attended the first two business forums and he organized a group of businessmen and women who traveled to Djibouti for a first hand assessment. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Augustine Ranga. I wish to invite you, Mr. Augustine Ranga to come here and give us uh, your experience, your advice, your ideas on how we can move forward this business partnership. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Oscar. Your Excellency Hassan Mahmoud, Your Excellency and the uh, I cast my neighbors who instead of layering goats, they layer the dogs. And you know my English teacher was coming in class in the morning time and then uh, the dogs used to back up. And we had a fit to go in the early classes to get enough English. But otherwise, <laughs> we may have with my little English, which I picked in the afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yesterday, we had the, also a good number. And we had also the leaders of the business associations. Like we had a seat, and today, I think they are still here. Uh, you stand up on cognition. Uh -huh. We are those who came from Qatar. Qatar, no. Kafo, no. Litea, no. Okay. But I, I wanted them also to be organized because they are the leaders of our business associations. I want to give you a little life experience. Uh, during our trip to Djibouti. But before, 
I want also to recognize my respected team who sacrificed their money, time, and all the resources to accompany me to this Djibouti. Please, can you stand up for recognition? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yesterday we had about uh, 13, but now we have three. Thank you for sacrificing for the Ugandans. Now, why did we choose to go to Djibouti? You know, business community found a lot of challenges after the pandemic, COVID pandemic. I think all of us, we know what happened. Many people lost a lot of their business, and until now, people are still struggling to find out how they can recover their business and their money which has been lost for so long. I know many people have left business. That's what I'm sure, and I think you cannot doubt that. So when we got a chance, and we heard about the beautiful free so we just eat an advert on social media. You know, we have this, it's now like a disease. Uh, you know someone who they call Utami Fungrombe? Utami Fungrombe, you know. Uh, the drunk that was in the funeral, whatever. You know, when you are thinking about something, you say, ah, so, now this one is turned into a That whatever you do, whatever you think about, someone sends it to, to a, 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 a friend within a minute. So we have to take care. Now we went to Djibouti. We observed some few things. I think uh, maybe we are better than them in some few, and they are better than us in some few. First of all, security in Djibouti is 100% plus. Because even if you are given money to show someone a guy in the streets of Djibouti, I think you can pay to eat that money. All the police with a batoon. You can fetch it that money. Then the other thing, I asked His Excellency, you know, I thank also His Excellency Richard Tamura because he went uh, time before us, to, I think, to prepare for us <laughs> with uh, His Excellency Hassan. And we told them, my friend, we are coming, but we want to stay in downtown. We don't want these good places. We told them, we don't have money, but we want to stay in Katanga. What, you understand? Why did we try to choose that, uh, that area? We wanted to go deep to understand how their security is and their hospitality. I tell you, the people of Djibouti are very good. Uh, uh, some people can say that you may be their backwards because they don't eat bread. I think <laughs> some people can say like that, but for that, they are okay. And I think the way they do things, because we used to interact with big people in Djibouti, and say, no, Augustine, if you want to bring the team here, if you want to start a business here, please deal with this one, then the government will come in later. Hey, hey nobody, these people, are they serious now. If you tell me to do, to do that, you know how much money I can get within a day. I first start to sign the papers, and then the government comes in later. So, that one also, we recognize that. Then we could move all around during the night, we could enter in all places freely without any escort. So you have to understand. The first thing I asked the ambassador how much is a, a duty flag to a, a dollar? He said, since 1945, it has been. 177 French flag to door till now. And when I, I asked about other things, they told us that we have seven international military bases here. You know what it means? I think those people cannot allow anybody to destabilize that place because those people to go there, they have something which also they have to protect. Uh, then, what did I find? 
When I came back, I visited some people and even uh, I called some people. I visited, I visited some people from Bukadif. Are they here? Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Then uh, someone from uh, who is running the program, Manitaliba. Uh -huh. Do we have someone from Chibinge Coffee? Because I told them why. I said, no. You know, before I left here, we didn't you know that there is a problem over the other agreement of coffee. For us, we knew about the other thing that I learned that they just had instead of from the coffee selling whatever. So then we said, hey, we are known by growing coffee. Then if now we are not in the, in the international market, what shall we do? Said no, if you go to the boot, at least we tell them on something about coffee. Because they are in the hot sea, hot area, they have to take a coffee at any time. When you reach there, before that there is market. Even though they, these people from Djibouti, they are few in the numbers, because I think they are not more than one million. You are more than one million. One and a half. Eh? One and a half. <laughs> no, no. Even if they are two millions, they focus a lot to say that now if we go there to transact business there, that we shall employ. In five years, 70 percent foreigners, 30 percent locals. You understand? Then, by then, after five years, you will be, uh, make it upside down. Uh, locals, 70 percent, then foreigners, 30 percent. But for me, I told them that I'm bringing here four million people from Uganda to start a business here. Now, if four million people go to Djibouti and start business there, and they give us 30%, will they maintain that theory? They are one million. Then if they want that part at all, it means that we shall get half of a Djibouti part to, to, to come to the other company. So that theory also, they have to produce more children if they want to sustain that theory. Now, another thing, when you test the world of Djibouti, it is solid. All right? The water from here, the water is fresh. Why can't we export water to Djibouti? They say, I can have a soul, I can have a water. You're not. We say, we take the water from there. These people from Yemen will take it. Those from Ethiopia even will take it. Even in Sudan. Because these people told us that they are so deposited in the railway line from Ethiopia to Juba. So which means that now they are coming to our back. We have to wake up and take this market as soon as possible. These people are dealing in the cars. Now you have a problem that now they are saying that you will pay taxes from Mombasa, not so. Actually, that means that the free trade zone for cars is, is, is off. So you can get a hub there, you can get a place in Djibouti, you buy your own cars, you put them from there. When you get money to pay for tax, you send one to Uganda. Then others, Nigerians buy, others buy, and wherever uh, can buy from you. Because this is an international market. Now let me give the, that business, because for us in Uganda, we don't manufacture cars, but we are trying to copy. <laughs> we took their brownie nuts, mangoes, avocado. Ginger, uh, tamale, uh, pineapples, and the way they tested our fruits, everyone was wondering how we, we, we inject the sugar in the pineapple or honey. And we have them here. Why are we poor? For us, we told them that they have come here on a real situation. We come here to do business, we bring our fruits here, we bring our water here, we bring everything here. They said, no problem. Then we can buy other things from, also from where? From there. Some people, you can let people, I know you, you are very smart. We have to take back on this one to get this one. And the queen, I the not know tomorrow, but today. Many people were asking, you see now you are calling the people on social media uh, to, to, to take them to Djibouti. Do you know that spies are coming and saying, what? I want many spies.
spite. If they are there, you give me more. When you fear spite, to spy on you. If you are in straight line, we are looking for money, we are looking for market, we are looking for well being of our families, brothers and, uh, and uh, sons and daughters. And when you feel, get them down. Because now for us, we are like our coming from Rumi. When we talk about it, we tell everyone what we have seen there. But in Mr. Danishe, I want also to ask the government. When the ministers go outside, let them come to the TV and they tell us what they have seen there. Because they use our money to go. Yeah. Then you put them to go and they tell them, I have been in America, this has been good, this is there, this is there. Then we stay out and the country developing. So, with that, I think I cannot tell you more. But I know. I would uh, request the two His Excellencies. Please, can you make a pass and arrange at least another one tour for Ugandans to go and see what is happening in Djibouti? Because for my head is small, and you understand but the dogs barked at me. But other people are very wise and clever. They will see more, even very more than what I saw. So I would like you, when you come back on the microphone, very much and they say that what I have uh, appealed to you is granted. And then I know when you put up with the people who are looking for money and they don't sell it. And then these people who are going outside in the Middle East to, to do the other Biyomba thing. <laughs> you can even hear in the British they are going to pay some more good money. And then these people are very much in spring. I tell you, people, you try to go to Djibouti and they copy, you will find that you can also we go somewhere. You know, we are better than say, but we can also copy something which they have. These people are living in the desert, they cannot dig anything from there. That's why they don't have villages. But then we, they can depend on us, on our food. But what can they want to do? You understand? Let us go there, we eat to the market. We take the matoke there, we buy our matoke, we take the beer from here, we buy our beers, and then they will copy how to eat matoke. You know, you know how much? Uh, Mr. So, can you tell us how much money we use it to buy three kilograms of meat and, uh, and, uh, and uh, tomatoes? 50 US dollars. Have you understood? Two kilos of meat and one state job. Mr. Kanishi, we have a lot of cows. Meat has to make it there. We go to the cellar of Sawanya. Then after Sawanya, you have to go to the supermarket. And the supermarket, the price goes higher. So, if you make a deal with these two uh, big men, they can get a supermarket for our meat. Then the Manyapur will become happy. <laughs> you understand? So, there are a lot of chances and opportunities. Please, we have to give our people opportunities and we have to show them where they can get money from. We are getting problems because people are poor. People are disturbing you because they think they are not eating from you. And we shall not instead keep on giving them money. But let us give them the possibilities of making money and they eat their money happily. Then you will see the uh, country sitting in stable. Other things we shall talk about. On the same degree of fire, 
And then it starts to so, 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 so. then, then you find those ones who which that do not hope. They stay there. So I think some will hope from today, others will hope in the future, others will hope when they are Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Nakastin, for giving us the, your first hand experience of the environment in Ibuji. Thank you so much. He said some doing security, that's very true. I wish to state it clearly that, as he said, there are seven military bases in Djibouti, strategic, of course, all of them, uh, that are part of the world's powers. USA has its largest military base in Djibouti. Japan has its largest military base in Djibouti. China has its largest military base in Djibouti. France has its largest military base in Djibouti. Germany and Italy all have their largest military bases in Djibouti. That explains the level of security, the level of confidence they have in their government. I wish to recognize Mr. Bobby Juko Chimbogwe. Mr. Bobby Juko Chimbogwe is the CEO of Pure Agro Africa. Uh, of course, he is a farmer enabling company and food value chain company established in both Uganda, Kenya, and Europe, and supplies food items to the oil and gas sector here in Uganda, Motor Engine, and GCC Services Limited. He supplies also the airport, New West in-flight services at the Entebbe Airport. He supplies largely all the foods you see in Curry Falls supermarkets here in Uganda, shelter biblical, both fresh and dry. The young man, Mr. Bobby, kind of standard of recognition. Thank you. Um, we have more people that we shall be introducing. Casita has been mentioned. Proceed. Mrs. Prosim Soke, kind of stand up for special recognition. We have Djibouti nationals here in Uganda who are working. And uh, of course, also we have those who are studying. There's a lot of potential for the education sector in Djibouti. But for today, we have the representatives, may you kind of stand up to be recognized. We have Ms. Gladys from the Uganda Free Zone Authority here with us. Thank you for coming. Hussein Ronald, Mr. from Nice House of Plastics. Thank you for coming. We have a representative from Cairo Bank that has a lot of money that going forward we shall, of course, endeavor them to partner with us to see how best they can facilitate the business community that is going into Djibouti. Ms. says now to Wahiv, kindly <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, we have Mr. Abubakar Mayanja, Mr. Abubakar Mayanja is the country manager of DHL Robo Forwarding Uganda Limited. Thank you for coming. Uh, he has been he has been in Djibouti several times, purposely to see the progress on the free trade zone. Is one of our future expected big time, of course, partners. He has also hosted His Excellencies in his 
country office here and start the discussion that will see how best deliveries of goods and services can be done. This international free trade zone that you see has a special package in a sense that the goods coming from any part of China for now through the free trade zone in Djibouti by sea and then from the British Free Trade Zone to the Devon Airport by air cargo uh, is being factored at $5.5 per kilo. <laughs> With this arrangement, we believe we can make the business community here and in the region, Congo, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and even Kenya, very competitive once they make good use of this free trade zone. And once we pattern or enter an arrangement between the two free zones, Djibouti and Uganda, probably the business community will make a lot of business sense in this kind of arrangement. So we're looking towards all of you partners uh, to be part of this arrangement, to give us the ideas that we need, because for you, you have been in this for a very long time. If you can help us understand the best way possible to share this partnership to make ourselves more competitive, then we shall be good to go. That's the purpose of this Djibouti Uganda Free Trade Zone Conference. I wish to recognize Mr. Onyango Robert from Uganda Revenue Authority. Is he here? Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Onyango Robert. I believe that being here is extremely good and gives us a mileage in listening to what the business communities, the community here has to say, and also guiding us much more in entering into a better contractual relationship once our community enters the free trade zone. We have intention of forming an association of Ugandan business community in Djibouti. Once we have had a good number register their companies in Djibouti, there are three categories of registration in Djibouti. The first one, you can become a single shareholder. The second one, you can become two shareholders. Yes. And the third, His Excellency Hassan, you will have to give us more information about the third category. The third type is getting your company here and you actually operate it in Djibouti. For purposes of emphasis, before we enter into the phase of discussion, is that the benefits are enormous for the business community going to Djibouti. As I speak, His Excellencies have already negotiated with the government of Djibouti to have Djibouti Airlines fly into Uganda regularly. We hope to finalize the same arrangement with Uganda Airlines as the volumes, of course, increase. The free trade zone, as the previous speaker said, is a one-stop shop, one-stop center. And it has the following benefits. One, zero tax, zero percent tax on enterprise, zero percent tax on dividends, zero percent property tax, zero percent VAT, CNSS 10.2 percent. They have put a mark on the work permit, which is only $150 by year, and these benefits are supposed to run for 99 years for those who take early advantage of this free trade zone. Of course, as Mr. Augustine said, 70% of the staff is expected to come from anybody going to Djibouti for investment, as we've had a population this not that much. That's the 20% fits 
in the first five years. That's the initial discussion that we have been guaranteed. And then after five years, 30% uh, can go for the foreigners. So this is, to me, one of uh, the opportunities that would make our business community take off. Dr. Akram, may you can stand up. He's going to, he's a degree national in Uganda, he's a doctor. And uh, with his team, subsequently we shall be evolving more of the nationals to interact with the business community for the purpose of, of, of knowing each other, such that in, a, in an event you want to go to the beauty for a week or two, you can pick someone from this community, partner with them, okay? Because they understand the culture well, they understand the language well, and yes, they understand us much better. So to us, the nationals, the Djibouti nationals here in Uganda, much as they are big down businesses, they are a huge resource to help us understand and maneuver better uh, into the free trade zone. Uh, if you help me in moving the mic around as we enter into the phase of uh, discussion. Kindly give us your questions, give us your ideas, relate from your past experiences, and share with us a better view on how we can make this partnership possible. Thank you so much.